So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Antonia Makata, and I'm the information coordinator for the Environment, Sustainability and Library section of IFLA, also known as NCULIB. And I'm also the Director of Central Services at the University of Sydney Library. My colleagues and I are here today to soft launch NCULIB's forthcoming publication called Libraries Driving Education for Sustainable Development. And this book will be published early next year, open access, and we're grateful for the support of De Gruyter Publishing. This will be a hybrid session in Zoom and in person, since several of our presenters are overseas. I'm, I'm joined by the authors of four of the chapters of the book, who will present a brief synopsis of their research, and this will be followed by a panel discussion. Before I introduce our panel, I'd like to say a little about the book. Sustainability and climate action are global issues of concern. And in recent decades, libraries have demonstrated a commitment to contribute to the 17 UN SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. Directly related to the SDGs mm. is the UNESCO framework called Education for Sustainable Development towards achieving the SDGs. It's also called ESD for 2030 and it was launched in 2020. In line with the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the 17 SDGs, the program is planned to run until 2030. In, 2020, in the 2020 ESD roadmap, uh, it builds on UNESCO's 2014 Global Action Program that aimed to reorient and strengthen education and learning to contribute to all activities that promote sustainable development. It places a stronger focus on education's central contribution to the achievement of the SDGs. <clears throat> Although libraries are not directly addressed in the aforementioned documents, Priority Action Area 5, Accelerating Local Level Actions, emphasizes the importance of actions in communities where meaningful transformative action is most likely to occur. The efforts of libraries to contribute to education for sustainability are unfortunately often overlooked. However, libraries, especially green and sustainable libraries, deserve a prominent recognition as learning institutions and active driving partners for ESD. The book examines the ways in which libraries of all kinds contribute to the goals of the UNESCO ESD program. It focuses on innovative approaches, formal and informal education programs, which are created and provided by green and sustainable libraries. Sorry. Back to Zoom. Sorry, what's happened there? The publication is a truly reflection, a truly global reflection of libraries' contribution to ESD. And the authors are drawn from 13 countries representing every continent and every type of library. The book consists of three major parts. The first introduces libraries' general contribution to ESD, and it examines the paradigm shift for library support of ESD in recent decades, including roles, contributions, and challenges. The second part provides specific cases and innovative approaches to ESD worldwide in the public and school library sectors. And the third part provides examples and practices from the global academic library sector and from the library and, inf and, and from library and information science education. Sorry. Before introducing our speakers, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Janine Schmidt, who is joining us in the audience today. Janine has been the series editor for the De Gruyter Saar IFLA publication series for the past five years and has edited an incredible 12 books. That's amazing. <laughs> She's also Trenholm Director of Libraries Emerita at McGill University, Montreal, Canada, and a Director of Makurta Solutions in Brisbane, Australia. Janine undertakes voluntary professional activities and consultancy services. Former roles include university librarian at the University of Queensland, uh, director collection services at the State Library of New South Wales, and senior lecturer School of Library and Information Studies at the University of Technology in Sydney. Uh, Janine has participated extensively in the activities of the International Federation of Library Associations, IFLA, and was awarded the IFLA Medal in 2023. Mm -hmm. 
Janine remains passionate about the role of information and libraries in transforming people's lives <coughs> and the achievement of sustainable development goals in a disrupted society. And she regards collaborative activity as essential to future success. Please join me in welcoming Janine, everybody. Now I'll introduce our speakers, which might be easier to see if I just close that, sorry. Here we go. We have our speakers on screen as well as <coughs> on the slide. <laughs> and they'll each get to speak during the course of this session. So our first speaker today will be Dr. Petra Hauka. She is the visiting lecturer librarian at the Berlin School of Library and Information Science, Humboldt University, Berlin, Germany. Following Petra, we'll hear from Mariam Banu, who is a senior research fellow at the University Grants Commission at Central University of Tamil Nadu in India. We'll then return to Germany with a presentation from Dr. Mel Schatz. Mel is a subject specialist in sociology and political science at Gottingen State and <laughs> University Library and lecturer modern Chinese studies, Gottingen University, Germany. She is also chair of the sustainability working group of SUB Gottingen and a co-founder of the Gottingen Seed Library. And then our two presenters who are here in person today to present an Australian perspective are Dr. Helen Weston and Jacqueline Lucas, who uh, you've, both heard, you've heard from both already this afternoon. They're, very busy, they're having a busy afternoon and thank, thank you for your generosity of time. Um, Helen, Dr. Helen Weston is the program leader for library and research at Loretto College in Cooperu, Queensland, and convener of the Australian Library and Information Association's School Library Special Interest Group. And Jackie is the professional learning teacher librarian at the Australian Library and Information Association. So welcome to all of our speakers, please. Let's give them a round of applause. So our first speaker, Dr. Petra Hauka, will examine the role of libraries in the UNESCO Education for Sustainable Development Program, highlighting their contributions to sustainability education in terms of library activities and services. Worldwide, libraries actively contribute to achieving the goals of the 2030 Agenda within their communities through educational initiatives aligned with the UNESCO ESD program, often without being consciously aware of their contribution. Petra's presentation emphasizes the importance of enhancing the visibility and recognition of the socially significant role of libraries as key partners at the local, national, and international levels. So I'll hand over to you, Petra. Please, uh, for our speakers online, please tell me when you want me to advance to the next slide. Yes. Over to you, Petra. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Antonia. Good morning to everybody. Yes, welcome everybody. I would like to give you an extract of my chapter as an appetizer to read finally the whole article in the book. Uh, the next, please. <clears throat> this chapter comprises a study examining the role of libraries in the UNESCO ESD for 2030 program, highlighting their contributions to sustainability education and the visibility of libraries' contributions to the SDGs and the ESD program. Next, please. A critical reduce course analysis and a multiple case study approach was employed to examine academic and professional literature, as well as various websites and platforms. Next, please. The analysis confirmed that libraries significantly promote, contribute to the ESD program, but these contributions are seldom recognized by libraries itself or by national library associations, by governmental publications, or even by the public. Next, please. Uh, libraries worldwide actively contribute to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development through educational activities within their communities. Many examples are documented at the Library Map of the World with its SDG stories. Next, please. Examples of these initiatives 
include workshops, reading programs, and community events that educate the public on sustainability topics. Next, please. Nevertheless, libraries' roles in education for sustainable development are often overlooked for their lack of visibility and recognition in this context. Libraries are often without own consciousness of their contributions. Public libraries are often rather reluctant to position themselves as green libraries with corresponding programs. Next, please. The agenda encourages member states to conduct regular and inclusive review of progress by submitting a voluntary national review. Out of 193 member states, just 40 countries and the European Union submitted a VNR in 2023. And from this, only 19 of the 40 VNRs discuss libraries' contributions to the SDGs. Four, Canada, Croatia, Ireland, and Singapore are presented with SDG stories in the library map of the world. The question is, <clears throat> why do countries give so little visibil visibility to their library's SDG commitments? Next, please. Since 2016, more than 300 applications for the IFLA Green Library Award competition have been received from around the world. As of June 2024, approximately 60 applications have been shortlisted or even, for, even awarded. From these, only nine countries are presented in the library map of the world and only six countries submitted a, a, a national review in 2023. The question is once more, why is there so little visibility of libraries SDG commitment? Next, please. Here are some answers, but they are not satisfactory. Libraries commitment to the SDGs is often still seen as just preservation of cultural heritage. Libraries are often too shy to promote their contributions to the SDGs. And often national library associations are not doing enough to promote the visibility and appreciation of library sustainability commitment to the public. Even official, pub li official library association publications like this one, do not mention the commitment to the SDGs or ESD programs in any way. Finally, initiatives, programs, and statements of library associations do not find their way into government publications. Next, please. IFLA promotes the role of libraries in the ESD program, advocating for their recognition and support. The steps to engagement are a clear call for action. Next, please. Let me come to a conclusion. A next, um, yes, a non edu as non-formal education providers in the community, libraries are explicitly invited to contribute to education for sustainable development. It is crucial to enhance the visibility and recognition of libraries' socially significant roles as key partners in no not last one, as key partners in sustainability education. Libraries must become aware of their own potential and communicate their roles as socially relevant partners in ESD more strongly. The next research step could be the development of guidelines in the field of ESD and libraries. Sustainable development should be viewed as a core component of library and information science. And environmental education should be a new area of research in LIS. Next, please. Wherever you come from, public, academic, rural libraries, whatever, a library school, a library association. Go out of the box, become loud, 
tell the world what libraries can do and what they already do in terms of SDGs and ESD. Take action now. Next, please. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. Um, it's just muted there, there we go. So I'd now like to pre present our next speaker who is Mariam Banu. Mariam's presentation will explore the sustainability initiatives of the Valapatanam Grama Panchayat Library and the activities undertaken in the library in connection with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The exemplary initiatives implemented by the library Mariam, sorry. The exemplary initiatives implemented by the library have been included in the SDG stories of IFLA's library map of the world. Since it's the only public library in Kerala which focuses on educating the community on SDGs, the library sets an example for other libraries to adopt similar practices to promote sustainable development. Mariam would like to acknowledge Binoy Matthew, the librarian at Valapadanam Grama Panchayat Library, who inspired her to write the chapter for our book, and her co-author, who I believe is watching in here today, uh, Dr. V.K. Danyastri, the Assistant Professor Central Services at Tamil, uh, Central University at Tamil Nadu, Indi um, at Tamil Nadu India University. So over to you, please, Mariam. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. It's all good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Antonia, for introducing me and everyone associated with this chapter. As mentioned in the introduction, our research is focused on initiatives implemented in Walapatanam Grama Panchayat Library to educate the community on SDGs. So in the next slides, I'll be discussing the programs introduced in the library to achieve these goals. Next slide. The premise of the research is how public libraries play a crucial role in fostering a sustainable society by providing education and resources that promote the UN SDGs. And the initiatives in this village library exemplify how these spaces can effectively engage and educate the communities, paving the way for a more sustainable future. Next slide. So before introducing the initiatives of this library, it is essential to understand how public libraries in Kerala help to enhance the literacy skills and education sector of the community. Under the leadership of P.N. Panikar, who was a social reformist, a public library movement started early in the 1930s that helped to set up small libraries and reading rooms by promoting a culture of non-formal education. And these public libraries have been significant in empowering the marginalized communities and thereby fostering social change. Next slide. The librarian, Mr. Binoy Matthew, has introduced several innovative initiatives that align with the sustainable development goals designed to enhance accessibility and participation to engage diverse segments of the community. For this, the library has created a forum for different age groups like children, women, youth, and elderly members. And the activities of the library is added into IFLA's library map of the world for its contribution towards SDG goals, that is good health and well-being, quality education, and partnership for goals. Next slide. The library aims for a sustainable model of education where public libraries should be an excellent facilitator of socio-cultural activities. For this, different approaches are introduced by the librarian to make learning fun for children, such as arts and games, a journal for documenting the children's reading experience, facilitating visits to book exhibition stalls, which will help the kids introduce to a wide range of books, authors, and publishers a YouTube channel to showcase the library events reaching a broader audience and promoting the initiatives online. In conclusion, the library aims to foster a culture of reading and learning, ultimately enhancing educational outcomes in our community. Next slide.
To achieve gender equality, the Women's Forum of the Library has introduced several initiatives like cycling club to promote physical fitness and community bonding, raising awareness about gender equality by screening films centered on women empowerment, a book discussion group to share their opinions, exchange ideas in meaningful dialogue, which will enhance library literary appreciation. So these initiatives help to provide safe and engaging spaces for women members of the village to connect, learn, and grow. Next slide. The library constantly supports career advancement of young men and women of the village by organizing coaching classes for students to prepare effectively, facilitating webinars for students who are interested in exploring educational opportunities and helping them to connect with experts who can provide information on overseas education programs and scholarships. This will help the students to make informed decisions about their higher education choices. Next slide. Similarly, <coughs> excuse me, the library has a forum for elderly members where they are encouraged to take part in library activities, which includes organizing a leisure trip to nearest town attractions like pet stations and beaches, which help them to connect, share experience and strengthen friendships. Since senior citizens are valued members of the community, the librarian encourages their participation and the wisdom and uh, are crucial assets that could be imparted to the younger generations. And in line with responsible consumption, the library has installed solar panels to reduce energy consumption, thereby setting an example and encouraging the community to adopt, adopt sustainable energy practices. Next slide. Integrating environmental education is another priority area of the library. And to achieve this, the library organizes interactive sessions with subject experts and observing international days of environmental significance to gain a deeper understanding on topics like climate change, conservation, and sustainability. Besides, the library has also got a biodiversity garden developed in, col in collaboration with the help of various community groups, local schools, colleges, and volunteers. Awareness begins with knowledge. So the library encourages bicycle riding to educate the children and the community on sustainable modes of transportation. Next slide. This rural library serves as a vital community hub, actively promoting visits from local schools and colleges. So through, this, through these visits, we showcase the innovative practices and resources available at the library, encouraging students and educators to engage in lifelong learning. This collaboration contributes significantly towards achieving sustainable development goals. When public libraries partner with academic institutions, they create a synergy that fosters community development, supports education for all, and promotes environmental and social sustainability. So in conclusion, the Valapattanam Gramma Panchayat Library plays a crucial role by educating the community on sustainable development goals. And under the leadership of Mr. Benoit Matthew, the library continues to thrive as a cornerstone for education by actively engaging children, women, youth, and senior citizens through tailored programs. And I'm positive that in the future too, the library will continue to adapt and grow to stride towards a sustainable society. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miriam. It's amazing to hear about the work that your library is doing. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Mel Schatz. Mel will speak to us about the ESD initiatives of the University Library at Gottingham. The library strives to improve its environmental performance by engaging in its own projects that will diminish its environmental footprint and create awareness of the SDGs among its users and employees. Creating and implementing sustainability activities within the library demonstrates a commitment to addressing environmental challenges and establishes a foundation for engagement with the community and community learning. ESD extends beyond theoretical knowledge and encourages the incorporation of hands-on experiences that illustrate sustainable practices and the relation to community learning. Depending on the task, this can either be simple or challenging. Over to you, Mo. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Antonia. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity um, to present a little bit uh, of our work here. Um, first slide, please. Or next slide, please. 
Um, we have a sustainability working group um, at our library, and I will talk a little bit about our sustainability policy today, about projects we are working on, challenges we are facing. And um, just as a background information, we are having about 6,000 visitors in our central library per day. And when there are busy times, it's up to 100,000 visitors. Next slide, please. Um, our sustainability policy is a roadmap. It's uh, our foundation. Um, we developed this. The director signed it and we published it on our web page and as well um, in our Zenodo community. And um, we are addressing a lot of topics, for example, energy management, where we have to work together with the university, sustainable transport um, opportunities uh, for our staff, and um, also materials management, where we integrate the principles of reduce, reuse, and recycle, or water conservation. Next slide, please. So to talk a little bit more about reduce and reuse, um, we started awareness campaigns. On the right side of the slide, you can see one of our Ricky posters, um, where we have several. And this one is the one um, addressing the topic uh, reducing trash. So we try in a rather humorous way um, to remind everyone um, to reduce um, or avoid even trash. And we have these posters all over in our library on every floor. But it's not enough to only start awareness campaigns. We also need to give the opportunities for the visitors um, to uh, reduce trash, for example. So on the left side of the slide you can see our waste separation systems that we bought and we have installed on every floor and um, we are working together with a coffee shop in our library where now when you get a coffee to go you would um, pay one euro deposit and get a porcelain cup and when you finish your coffee you need to return the porcelain cup and you get your euro back uh, before that, um, people, and as I told you, sometimes it's several thousand people per day, and people bought a to-go cup, um, which is made of uh, paper with this uh, plastic cover, uh, finished their coffee and threw it away. So this created quite a bit of waste. Also, we are joining the German refill program. This is a, a program all over Germany. It's not our program, but we are joining it. So um, when you see a sticker like the one in the middle of the slide, people would know they can for free refill their water bottles with tap water, and they would not um, need to buy another bottle of water and throw the old one away. Next slide, please. Um, another indoor um, activity that's play taking place in our library, this is on the first floor and in the background you can see the reading area is our seat library that we support. Um, you can borrow seats here for free, um, grow them at home um, and when you uh, harvest the um, tomatoes or beans or whatever you've borrowed, you collect against the, again the seeds and return them to the library. The aim is to preserve crop varieties and to strengthen the power to act. Uh, but this project, we collaborate also with eco schools. Um, so schools are participating, also borrowing seeds and educating their pupils um, about the relevance of crop varieties, biodiversity, and so on. Next slide, please. Uh, an outdoor activity uh, we worked on is our um, meadow with uh, climatic perennials. Um, this is collaboration um, with the old botanical garden who gave us all these plants for free and uh, the green office and so many more actors um, at our universities. And um, the aim is to provide food for um, wild bees, for insects. And um, we are right now working on the information panel that will go along with this uh, meadow. And again, we are collecting the seeds here as well um, that you can borrow them for free in our seed library. So people could simply um, create their own uh, meadow at home if they like to and copy this idea. Next slide, please. So what are our experiences and challenges? Changing people's habits is still very difficult. Uh, even though everybody knows about the relevance of the topic, it's um, quite a task. 
Um, our sustainability working group has no um, money at all, so to say. We need to raise funds for any activity. All the things you just saw I presented, we need to um, find the money um, to fulfill these ideas. And uh, then there's a super high level of bureaucracy, um, which is very, very time consuming. But still, um, we uh, recognize our responsibility. And uh, as Petra said, um, we, um, we are uh, very visible with all of our projects and um, the good feedback and uh, new ideas that are coming uh, to us are an inspiration for us and our driving force. So our strategic approach is inviting, informing and encouraging. Um, next slide, please. So if you want to learn more about what we are doing, please uh, read our book chapter. We are super happy to be part of this uh, book and um, visit our um, web page or um, download our material on our Zenodo community. Or if you say, okay, great projects, how did you do it? If you have questions, uh, please feel free to contact us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mel. The, the three online presentations have been absolutely fascinating. And now we have two in-person in presenters here, here at our seminar in Brisbane today. Uh, for those of you online, of course, you'll be seeing them in Zoom. And I'd like to welcome to the lectern, Dr. Helen Weston and Jacqueline Lucas. In their presentation, they'll examine how school libraries have great potential to transform learning environments and create sustainable change by empowering young people in their actions for sustainable development. This presentation outlines the innovative interdisciplinary integration of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, otherwise known as STEM, in school libraries through the concept of a citizen science corner and how their implementation has the potential to transform library spaces and create significant benefits for science staff the young citizens that contribute and the scientists they work with. Welcome. Many thanks, Antonia. The seed for the idea for this chapter came about when uh, Petra Halko very kindly um, invited the IFLA School Libraries section to contribute to the book project. And we saw that potential topics included in library roles in transforming learning environments for sustainable development, in particular, a dot point that said creating or integrating resources for sustainable development education or citizen science in general or library citizen science projects. Now, why? While I myself wasn't working in that space, I certainly knew someone who was an expert in that area and had carried out research um, as a teacher librarian working with a scientist and uh, they had implemented a very successful um, program in their school library and this was um, the perfect topic that we could include as a chapter now, if you're not familiar with the term citizen science, it involves public participation and collaboration in scientific research with the aim to increase scientific knowledge. So everyday people going out and collecting data and collaborating with scientists for the greater good. Thanks. Thanks, Jackie. So um, the, just being careful of the cable, the, um, what, what we did was we set up a, a, a corner in our library. Um, very simply, we borrowed two laptops from the, that were no longer in use from the IT department. Um, so we, I, I, I uh, was trying to do it um, with, with the least amount of, of technology, something that could be, even though this was being done in a, in a secondary school environment, this might also be able to be done in primary schools, um, some little schools in remote areas of Australia that don't have a lot of technology. Um, this is done using a, a laptop. That's it. Um, it was my my response, I guess, to um, involving STEM in libraries. It was kind of almost like a bit of a 
break away from the maker space um, scenario. Thanks, Jackie. Um, and so what you see, what you're seeing there is students engaging with um, programs um, that are available um, whereby they we we in, um, get involved and uh, find the data that the scientists are looking for. So you see the reef project there um, where students were, are identifying um, coral uh, on the reef and there was a little picture of the girls digging for dirt. That was a Soils for Science project. So um, the school um, can get involved as much as they want to. The students and the staff can get involved as much as they want to or as little as they want to. It's ongoing. We do a different project each term. And there's my amazing team, um, the science head department, um, our project um, manager in the library. And um, this was uh, a more recent project where we combined with South Metro Health to um, make sure that the Zika mozzie wasn't invading our shores. So, um, and our wonderful um, team of girls that um, gets the word out there and supports us as we're doing the projects throughout the school. And you can see how citizen science projects align so clearly with education for sustainable development for 2030 priority action areas, in particular, transforming learning environments and the school library in particular as a, as a place to become more than the place that students come to for reading, but a place where they are socially gathering, where they are sharing the stories of the data that they have found and expanding their information literacy, their science literacy, their digital literacy, their media literacy. It's building the capacity of educators that teacher librarians are working with and it's empowering and mobilising youth to, youth to actually be um, contributing and doing something purposeful and, of, of course, accelerating local level actions. And you can see here where Helen has aligned the SDGs to particular projects, supporting students to become more aware of sustainable development goals quite explicitly through the action that they are taking. Helen will now talk to you about the evaluation of the project. So um, just want to share with you um, the kinds, the the levels of involvement we've had in in the um in the project so the what we i've explained is that we do a different project each term and we have seen a steady increase in the in, engagement of staff and students but it's really incremental. It's very, very small. And you'll see that, um, and this is um, the words of our wonderful editor, Janine and I came, or Janine um, helped me articulate, look, this is a slow burn. It's um, students have very complex lives. They've got a lot going on. The projects will depend on whether their level of interest. So in, in term one, when it, when it all began with those two tiny little laptops, we only had 18 kids. Uh, involved in the um, the Globe at Night project. Um, but at the same time, we were the only group in the Southern Hemisphere that was contributing data um, to about light pollution at that time. So if our 18 kids hadn't done anything, there would have been nothing um, for these um, scientists to work with. Term two, there was an increase of 5% and 45 kids got involved um, interacting with the Citizen Science Corner because that was the um, iNaturalist project. Some of you may know iNaturalist. Then we saw um, a bigger increase in the third term um, with 99 students getting involved. So almost 100 um, getting involved with University of Queensland Soils for Science project where we're looking for the next um, uh, my, microbe that's going to cure um, uh, the um, disease, the an anti antibiotic um, solutions. Um, and um, then we had a, a participation of 180 kids with our big butterfly project. So it started at 18. We got to 180 at the end of the year, but it's um, it's 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 little bit by little bit, depending on their interest levels. 
So implementing the Citizen Science Corner in the school library is an opportunity for school libraries to demonstrate their value by supporting teachers and their communities to embed education for sustainable development into the curriculum and to build sustainability initiatives um, into the ethics and values of our library. So where to from here? Um, the Australian curriculum has a sustainability cross-curriculum perspective and so often teachers um, struggle to find the content to put that and what better than for the school library to support staff um, by taking the action of a citizen science corner. And you may have heard on the grapevine that Alia has developed a code of ethics for the Australian Library and Information Services workforce. It went out for consultation um, earlier this year and it is going to be launched in October. And as part of that code of ethics, there is a clause called sustainability that the library and information workforce takes informed action to create a more environmentally and socially just world. So this is now embedded in the code of ethics for the library workforce in Australia, which is a great action to see for the future. Here's just some of the projects that Helen's um, students worked in. So I encourage you to um, be familiar with these, check them out and see what you can do in your library context, um, whatever that may be. And just by simply setting up the corner to collect the data and encouraging people to participate, you're off and away. It's that easy. Thank you very much. Stage. Thank you. Thank you to all our wonderful presenters, and particularly to Jackie and Helen, who's just have just given us some wonderful insights into their citizen science corner. The scheme of library history, libraries' focus on contributing to ESD is relatively new to the sector. So, I'd like to ask our panelists: In your ESD work, have you experienced any challenges in shifting community perceptions? and expectations that sustainability education is a legitimate role for your library. And I might throw to Merle first for an answer. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, it's difficult to measure, of course, but uh, I believe um, the good feedback we are getting and the results we are observing um, actually tells us uh, it is working and we indeed are achieving step by step within our central library um, some of our goals but um, also it's a long way to go and uh, we are discussing this a lot in our sustainability working group um, how can we even better address all these um, well topics you want to address how can we better encourage people and uh, we are not there yet, I have to admit. Thank you, Mel. Helen, I, I might ask you what your experiences have been in, this, in the school sector and school libraries in um, convincing people that sustainability education is a le legitimate role for libraries. Yes. Yeah, good. Um, um, the thing is, Jackie showed a little slide of the sustainability goals of how they connect with each of the projects. But that is still a big um, paradigm shift for our kids. I, I, we always run a little um, survey at the end to, to find out students' understandings and emergency interests. And I got them a little life at scale with that team of girls that you saw in the picture of who are the, the leaders in that space. Um, and and still um, a lot of the, the girls said that they were still struggling with their understanding of, of, of the sustainable development goals, what they are, how, how they were linked to the project. So I, I think I've got a lot of work to do in that space, um, making that more explicit. Yeah. Thank you. And Petra, what's your, your perspective on this question? Yes, I think libraries play a special and crucial role uh, in sustainability education and they, for example, could create uh, specialized collections on sustainability topics. They could host workshops and events focused on environmental issues. 
and of course collaborating with schools and community organizations to promote sustainable reading and uh, sustainability education. Thank you, Petra. I'm going to ask Mariam a related question, which is how well recognized libraries role in ESD is by local and government funding bodies or parent organizations such as universities. So do libraries actively need to lobby for their ESD role to be accepted or are funders encouraging them to be involved in ESD? Uh, yes, uh, Antonia. So the question here is about how the uh, library's role in SDG in ESD by local and governmental funding bodies. So the library which I have uh, selected for the research is Malapatanam Grama Panchayat Library, which is uh, a library directly under the jurisdiction of uh, state government. So I am say that uh, the state government is doing a wonderful job in promoting the public libraries. And as far as the funding goes, it's not just the funding from the state government, but the, uh, there is a, uh, you know, they can solicit donations from the community members as well, because the people of the community are ready to contribute uh, to the library. For example, like the solar panels installed in the library has been. So I think that uh, they, they can do wonders when it comes to the actual case of public libraries. Thank you, Mariam. Jackie or Helen, do you have a perspective on that in terms of um, parent organizations or governmental funding bodies contributing to ESD development in libraries? No. Well, I think the, the, the way that we um, respond to that is that we do, um, even though a lot of what we do is with the online um, projects, mm -hmm. we do have had to um, get work with the university, the um, universities, with the um, health um, organisations, government mm -hmm. health organisations. So I guess we are. Um, Putting that under the spotlight in that way, mm -hmm. with that, will facilitate some sort of information. Then, uh, the, 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 the digital, the online, the, 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 the line of those bigger organisations, as it were. It's critical to develop the partnerships, to look for opportunities, to seek collaborations, mm -hmm. whether that's through mm -hmm. Science Week initiatives, CSIRO, West Upon. ABC intervention and those different bodies who might have different connections. Absolutely. Um, we have our networks. It's so important to collaborate and build partnerships. Thank you. So, circling back to the focus of this weekend's seminar, which is sustainable reading at every age and stage, what is the role of librarians or, and libraries in encouraging reading about sustainability? And what strategies might they employ? Jackie, back to you. Desco um, tells us that 40% um, of educators know um, how to teach about climate change in a, in a cognitive sense, but only 20% know how to take any action about that. Um, <coughs> so it's, it's quite sad to think that people just feel um, a sense of inertia over what to do. Um, you know, we're inspired to, to take action, but what is that? And I really think that libraries have a, a critical role to play by providing um, you know, quality, representative resources in the first instance, but then backing that up with the other initiatives that are possible. Thank you. Mariam, how, how are you encouraging uh, the, the community in your libraries to read about sustainability specifically? I think you might be on mute. Yeah, okay. Am I audible? Yes, that's all good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so should I? Uh, is the question is for me, right? Yes, please. How, how uh, you encourage okay. Your, your, the community uh, that are the, the users, the clients of your library to read specifically about sustainability. Yeah, of course. 
So the library in question here is actually, I'm not the one associated with the library. I am a research scholar who have specifically selected this library because it has been doing uh, a, a wonderful job in promoting sustainable development education to, this, to its community. So the old credit goes to the librarian, Mr. Benoit Matthew. So I think he will be the one who is in full capacity to answer this question. But however, I think that uh, community participant participation must be deeply encouraged. The first thing that he did in his library was to ensure the participation of all age groups, from children to elderly members. So when you go and visit there, you it's it's like a community, it's like a what a civic hub. Like all people are actively engaged in the community. Uh, it's like a festival there. And there is uh, it's in, there is informal non formal education. There is formal education. Everything is so vibrant over there. And uh, he is the one hero behind all these initiatives. And it is except it is his initiatives that has been uh, successful in bringing the library to an international recognition. So all credit goes to the library. So we as library professionals should do our job well. Thank you. And in the university setting, either Merle or Petra, uh, how do you encourage your students to read and become more aware about sustainability? Well, one thing, of course, is uh, to integrate it into the lectures and uh, anytime you can and remind people uh, that it's uh, possible to read and to learn about the topic. Um, since we are part of the university on our web, uh, web page, we also uh, promote um, other activities of the universities touching these topics and especially in the library still um, access and visibility, I believe is key. So um, we, for example, um, are discussing right now to create a um, SDG corner in our library um, for the visitors um, so that when they pass by, they would simply see it and then, you know, curious and um, maybe grab a book and have a look. Also, we are creating a Zenodo um, a, um, a Zotero library on the um, topic of solar punk. And in the seed library, we offer a lot of information, material, and books as well. Um, it would be great to do more and to have more literature and, um, and um, other sources available but we are not a sustainability library. It is part of what we do. So we need to negotiate here our possibilities. Petra, have you had any particular strategies for success? <laughs> <laughs> I would be happy, but <clears throat> I'm just a visiting teacher and uh, yeah. there's not so much influence. And to be honest, uh, I haven't seen any activities in that direction from my university or my university library, but this is not the only one. Uh, examples <laughs> like in Göttingen are very, very specific and ve I'm very happy to have them and I hope they will grow and inspire others, but uh, there is much to do. So uh, perhaps a, a, a question that would be apt for you, Petra, given the wealth of experience you've had in library sustainability, if there was one key piece of advice that you'd give a library or a librarian starting out on their ESD journey, what would it be? Yes, just just start it. Just start. <laughs> 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 like in, in, in Göttingen, it, it always starts with one person uh, and, and then uh, it's growing. Um, but yes, it, it, it's very, Göttingen is a very, very good example for university libraries, but also what Miriam told us, it's a very, very good example. Yes, just start. And just going around the room, 30 seconds to wrap up each of you, what would your key uh, piece of advice be for a university, uh, public, school library, or any type of library, special library, get, just getting started on their ESD journey? What would it be? Mariam? You're on mute. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So my uh, my advice is that uh, no matter what adversity is coming in front of you, no matter what the challenge, be always there. You know, be this vibrant, uh, uh, active person because that's what the community members wants us to see. We need to be out there in the society, ready to help them 
whatever maybe the consequences are, I mean, whatever the problems are, it was the librarian, Mr. Benoit Matthew, has been doing the exact same thing. He will be there to address the issues of the community and targets services to uh, achieve their, uh, to, to understand their problems. So uh, as a librarian, as a, for a public library, there, there will be a lot of hurdles along, around the way, but we should be able to face it and drive forward. Thanks, Mariam. Over to you, Mel. And my advice would be start with the little small things you can handle. Um, try to find people that join you, talk a lot about it and go step by step and uh, keep on going. And then you, yeah, you get there slowly, slowly. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Helen. My colleagues have already said said it all but just, just to build on um don't don't wait till you've got all of the money to, to build the perfect space. So I I pinched two laptops is probably an idea but mm -hmm. you've probably got the resources already there to go in and um find your champions. Yes, um start like Pet just said, but um to be sustainable you're gonna need a buddy to help you. There'll be someone that wants to get on board every subject like the um to be involved in some sort of project, sure. I will finish with one word participate. Participate yourself and create opportunities for others to participate. Thank you so much. I think there's a theme through all of those answers, which is just get in there and get started, no matter how small your initial efforts are. Momentum will build over time. And if you have colleagues who are supporters, there'll be a groundswell. <laughs> so thank you so much to all of our presenters here. It's been so fascinating hearing from you. And I'm sure, I hope that the insights that have been provided today will inspire you to read our publication when it comes out early next year. It will be open access. So you will be able to read it very easily and it should be released in around March. A special thanks particularly to those of who've joined us from overseas. I know it's very early in the morning for you in Germany, Petra and Mel. And I'd also like to give a shout out to my colleague, Amy Allen Spark, who's come all the way from Sydney to help with this session today and keep the technology running in the background. <laughs> I think um, Janine might just want to say a few words before we wrap up. Janine, if you'd like to come up. Mind the cable. If you stand in front of the camera, they'll see you there. Ah. So I, I've read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more times than I might have wanted to. <laughs> But there are some uh, compelling stories that are being told about activities around the world. And I think we must share those ideas and pass them on to others. Uh, I, while listening to everybody today, I'm mindful of Slovenia, where they've really addressed it as a family concern and getting families involved. At the moment, my, uh, I've got an, an eight-year-old grandson whom I'm looking after in between everything else, which is uh, he's from Sydney. So they're, they're watching the match at the moment. I can report that the lions are slaying the swans. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> for, for those of you overseas, this is a... There are two very important days in the Australian calendar, <laughs> one being the Melbourne Cup, and the other is probably the match that's on today, <laughs> uh, which is a football that only Australians ever comprehend. <laughs> so, uh, and I don't, uh, I'm not one of them. So it's, a, it's, it's commendable to see everyone here instead of <laughs> glued to their screens watching uh, the match. Katy Perry was the star uh, performer. So that gives you an idea of how important this day is in the Australian calendar. But Slovenia was talking about the importance of the family. And I look at my eight-year-old grandson, and he has um, he, he's always teaching me about sustainability because he's had it from kindergarten. 
So I think it start early uh, in every part of the educational system and continue. And as I say, Slovenia is done in the family arena. Several chapters in the book address it through the cultural arena as well. And uh, so doing things through art and uh, the environment. And then uh, in particular, Spain has done a lot of work in the outdoors. Uh, now in Australia, we could do that extremely well most of the year round. So I think there are a whole lot of issues, uh, a lot of opportunities for raising the issues and concerns. So I have some flyers for the book. Uh, Helen Mandel, who's the Deputy Secretary General of the International Federation of Library Associations, had hoped to be here, but she sent me a text that the meeting she was at has continued. So I'm going to ask, Philip Kent, who's here, and Trish, I'm, I'm going to ask you to come up and launch the book. Oh. <laughs> and you can, I think both of you are perfectly entitled to do so on behalf of the International Federation of Library Associations. We haven't got a bottle of champagne and, <laughs> and we don't have the book. But, uh, we have the flyers. We have the flyers. <laughs> I think we should pose with the flyers. Yeah. So I think, uh, yes, a pose with the flyers and you can all take take a flyer and the book will be available, uh, I think, by the end of the year, um, but certainly early next year. I've also got a few flyers about another book that was published in the series uh, a couple of years ago on global action for school libraries. And I'm sure memory, many of you are familiar with the work of Barbara Schulz jones and Diane Aubert and their work on models of inquiry. And I think when we think of education and topics like sustainability, then models of inquiry are also very important as part of the, the teaching strategies. So I'd like to commend all the authors of the book for all of their work. And I'd invite all of you here to share your experiences, writing about what you've done and sharing that across the world helps you identify what it is you've done and certainly communicates ideas to others around the world. And I would commend that to you. So I'm just going to say, well, do you want, do you want to do to launch? Uh, oh. just, just say it. <laughs> I think we're, on, we're out of time. We're out of time, but okay. I would like to say on behalf of the Australian Library and Information Association and, and on behalf of IFLA, uh, we are very proud to launch today. Libraries driving education for sustainable development, a fantastic open access publish, uh, published book with contributions from around the world. And there is absolutely no excuse not for you, everybody in this room, to read it and share it and stop it. So, on behalf of us all, congratulations, and the book is launched. <laughs> Thank you so much, Billy. Thank you. Have a look at Thank you, everybody online. Thank you for our, to our presenters, and we we'll look forward to reading the book as soon as it's published. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Session. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.